Good evening, everybody. How you doing? This is Yusuf Chaudhary once again, tuning in from San Antonio, Texas. Uh, give me uh, a few minutes here. Mentor me. O E V. How are you? <laughs> What's going on? Thank you for tuning in. How you doing? You got any uh, questions for me today? Do you need any help? Charles, what's going on, my brother? Hey, I've been uh, seeing that you've been doing uh, a couple of tips on uh, you're doing your live streaming. That's pretty good. I'm so proud of you for doing that. And let me give you a quick tip. Uh, I'm noticing that you're doing it from your mobile device. Why don't you try to do it from your laptop? Wa salam brother Jabbar in Ubarak Kulantum Bakir. Takabala minna minkum. How you doing? So let me know if y'all have any questions. Uh, I got some few questions right here. Thank you for liking the video. Much appreciated. I gotta share this. Uh, just give me one more minute. I gotta share it in two groups real quick. Then we'll just start with the questions. But the job, I wanted to ask you, like, if you do want to, how do you do a test, like, for checking for vitamin deficiency? Not specifically, but all kinds of vitamin deficiency. What kind of test would you run? Is it a, is it a blood test? You have to send it to the lab? I've been looking around online. Uh, likewise, man, likewise. All right, so okay, so Charles said here, what is the best way to conduct project strategy? What is the best way to conduct a project? Okay, so, so the blood test. Okay, well, let me talk to you later on then. Uh, so you know, see if I can check something here. So Charles, what is the best way to conduct project strategy? I mean, it depends what kind of project, first of all, you're working on, right? Uh, and also depends on if you're doing everything by yourself or if you have a team that can actually help you, right? So let's say, for example, uh, if you take the example of a web development project, right? So you meet a, a prospect. If the prospect, know they, know, if the prospect knows exactly what they want, then the, then, the, then the works for you is easy. It's a little bit easy. But... When a, when a prospect comes to you, a small businesses who wants to, you know, hire, let's say, hire us for a, a web development business, then what it is, uh, you have to qualify them first. So you have to qualify them, ask them the several questions to understand where they add, what are the challenges, what kind of issues they're going through, right? And then after that, you come with an estimate and a timeline, when it's going to be delivered, when it's going to be completed, and what type of communication that you need to have between you and the uh, what you call it between you and the uh, uh, the client themselves like the the agreement has to basically state you know if you're going to take the payment like on a monthly basis like 25 percent every month or two payments 50 down 50 later and what is what is the expectation of your customer right so when once all that taken care of and the the contract is signed. Now you can use uh, again. If you do everything by yourself, you can put everything in Asana, Basecamp, Trello, Rike, whatever, and have the tool to be used for communication purposes, right? If you have the team, then you can add the team to do the to do the work for you. Uh, Makes sense. Then you just put the timeline and and put the expectation and keep the communication open back and forth. But everything has to basically go with the uh, with with the contract, okay? So I hope that was your question. So let me know if I was able to answer that. Uh, Brother Javed, you want uh, a link to such a test? Yeah, I mean, I, I looked at many of them, but all of them are asking for like specific. I want to I uh, see if there's a, a system where you can do 
a test for to check what kind of all vitamin deficiency deficiency you have on your body instead of just going for one because there's some tests only for like vitamin D or E or A and whatnot. I want to see if there's any service that can actually check and and I give some type of full feedback what, what what is good in terms of vitamin and what is lacking so I can specifically focus on the one that is lacking. You know what I mean? So let me know. Uh, I want to inquire about the effectiveness. Okay, so Jeff said I want to uh, inquire about the effectiveness of sending marketing emails with ideas about gift cards to subscribers. That's an excellent question. But what happens is that with the, with the email marketing, uh, whether Javid, is that the, the challenge is you initially must have the list of subscribers. And I don't recommend buying subscribers. That's a, that's a big no-no in the email marketing system, right? If you had a website that uh, requires the website visitors to basically collect name and email addresses and phone numbers, that's the first step. So there's a whole strategy behind how to get that. And it cannot happen quickly. If you can use advertising, like in a Google ads or Bing or Facebook ads that takes your target audience to your website, and from there you can collect the name and email address and phone number, then you can use the email marketing in terms of like giving them like a gift cards and coupons or reminders or wishing them, you know, whatever the holiday celebration or the day celebration, whatever they do, graduation, stuff like that. Something like kind of remind them, hey, thanks for being an awesome customer, something like that. You know, that's what I meant. But the, but the challenge is like, if you don't have those lists of subscribers, then you cannot, right now it's not going to work. And if you're going to build it organically, it's going to take you a, quite some time to build those audience based on who are visiting your website. The second option is if you can collect leads. So let's say you're on an ad on Facebook to collect name and email addresses, then you can use it to give them some sort of gift cards or you know that kind of stuff. Uh, in Facebook ads, you have two categories, lead ad and also website traffic ad. This way, of course, a lot of investments involved. You have to put money on the ad itself to capture those leads. You know, th Those are going to be my uh, recommendation. Bilal Idumar, bro, welcome back to Venture Point. What do you mean? I mean, I was all, I was almost here every day. <laughs> like, welcome back. Just because I didn't go live sometime. I'm here like almost every single day, right? I come here, spend a couple of times in the morning, meet prospect, meet clients, and after that, go to my other uh, client's office. Yeah, I've been moving before, during, even right now. That's what I do. Uh, let's see. Uh, Charles said yes, thank you. Uh, I have one who subscribed uh, while purchasing test. That's a good one too. If somebody purchase having the name and phone address and email address, but they have to be careful because when they enter the email address, when you send email to them, you can be under a violation because uh, according to spam can law, you have to make sure that they're expecting the email. So when somebody buy the product, you can put a check mark saying that if you put your email, we'll send you like updates. Uh, discounts and deals would you agree if they say yes then that means they opted in and to collect the name and email addresses you have to use a third party services like you know MailChimp or Aweber maybe I can even say that Aweber right or uh, MailerLite so these services you have to utilize it and use it which means you have to pay as well to use them and some of them are free like you know MailChimp is free up to like a thousand to two thousand MailChimp is also free to up to a thousand but mostly work with the website. And there's a way that you can also utilize social world, but that uh, disclaimer has to be there, okay? Because the whole email marketing has a whole different genre, has a different rules and whatnot, okay? Uh, you were streaming from other places. Yes, I was streaming from other clients' places. And I did stream from here too a couple of times. Maybe you missed it, uh, okay? Because I have four locations from through VenturePoint. Then I'm also part of Geekdom and I believe uh, Alamo City Studio. Then, of course, the, my client at the Alarm Mortgage, they have an amazing office there as well. So, yeah, I'm like, uh, I try to dominate different places, Bilal. Come on, man. You know me. I got to be everywhere, right? Grab all those offices. You know what I mean? So, so those, are good, uh, those are good questions. Keep coming. Keep sending me these questions. Um, let's see. Somebody left me a question right here. Uh, is blog important? Uh, is it mainly used for SEO? Well, that's a good question. I would say uh, blog is important. Now, I, I do know some customers, like few customers don't e that don't even blog, and yet they're doing great. But for majority that have website, in order for you, uh, in order for you, <laughs> dominate, dominate. in order for you, uh, in order for you, 
to understand how your audience find you finds you on Google because Google dominates the almost like 70 to 80 percent of the market share right so you, if your customer wants to find you they're gonna research information they're gonna research uh, uh, they're gonna ask questions they're gonna research for information about your product and services and for you to and for you to show up you have to write amazing amazing content that address your customers uh, problems and needs and challenges and wants and whatnot so the more content you put, like th the more valuable, not just any content for the sake of content, the more valuable, impactful, educational, uh, something beneficial to target to your target audience, Google will, will be able to index this information, send you more traffic, uh, help you with the natural link building and, and other SEO stuff, and this will create you know trustworthiness, authority, it builds effectiveness. So yeah, blogging is very very important, right? But you have to do it for that perspective as well and it does help with the search engine as well for sure right uh, I saw uh, this feature from Shopify that I use for my online store and it gives me an option to send gift card to those who have adopted in as subscribers I get it's free too yeah if you, if you, if Shopify has that option you can give it a shot why not especially when people buy it from your Shopify store uh, give it a shot if if that works uh, Sayed, what is the uh, best digital marketing strategy to get clients for selling insurance products, etc.? Well, the thing is, that's a very good question, Sayed, but there is no such thing as best digital marketing strategy, right? The digital marketing is like the medical field. You have so many uh, branches within the medical, right? So digital marketing is one thing. So within the digital marketing, you have search engine, you have social media strategies, you have content marketing, you have online ads like, you know, um, search engine ads like Facebook and Bing. Then you have social media ads like, Fa I'm sorry, search engine ads like Google and Bing. And, and social media ads like, you know, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, uh, TikTok, Snapchat, uh, Reddit. These are all social media advertising. Then you have content advertising like, you know, Taboola or Outbrain where you can have your blogging material published in uh, high ranking news sites. So the whole digital is it's different and it's too many and they all work. It only depends on what is your niche, right? If you say insurance, then there are things can be done organically, but the organic uh, uh, techniques and tactics takes time. Like when you do organic social media posts, when you do like uh, organic uh, monthly social media strategy, that takes time. If you want to collect data, if you want to get the customer to find you quickly, in a short period of time, you have to just run ads because you, the, the, the Google ads, the Bing ads, or the social media ads will help you to find your audience, their demographics, their income, uh, what they're searching for, and you tell us the ads to target that audience. For example, you can use uh, LinkedIn ads. Ads. Can we say the word ads? Like LinkedIn ads, you can also utilize that to find people that you know wants to buy the insurance, uh, what do you call it, uh, products, or want to sell the insurance product, right? So there's so many ways. There's no one way, okay? There's no one way because if there was one way, then everybody's going to make money and it's going to work for everybody. Even if you utilize one strategy, let's say if you utilize Google Ads with 10 different chiropractors, the result's not going to be the same. So that's why there's always something called A-B test. We always test, see what works, keep testing it, keep tweaking it because at the end of the day, your audience decide. Even if the ad shows up on, in the front of their faces, they will decide if they're going to make the take the decision or not okay so that was a, a good question from Sayed. um let's see what else i have here so about the blog yeah that's why it's very important but you have to be very careful that you don't want to write the content for the sake of content and dumping the content there you have to write it because your audience already looking for there are many ways to do that hundred ways of doing that you can use answer the .com to find the most common questions your audience are asking you can use a uh, course schedule head analyzer to, to make sure that the title is very catchy and interesting. Uh, you can use that awesome tool. You can also use tweakyourbiz.com slash title, gener uh, title dash generator to find the best titles. And there are many other SEO tools out there that can help you to analyze your competitor, see what's the top pages that coming up for that specific keyword and how many words you can write based on the popularity of the content. So there's, so there's someone that can help you to build that brand, build the trust uh, with your target audience and also convert them into a paying clients.
Okay, you're welcome, Said. Let me know if you have any more questions. Uh, let's see. What else we have here? Uh, if you're all enjoying this, uh, don't forget to uh, share this and uh, invite your awesome colleagues or tag them. I would highly appreciate it. So let's see what else we have. Any more question here? Okay, send so another one. Um, how follower wonk is different than buffer app? Well, the thing follower wonk, what it is, it, it's like an analysis tool for your Twitter account. So it basically will show you how many of your followers are active or inactive, uh, how many of them are fake and whatnot. So it's, a, it's an old uh, tool. Uh, follower wonk, let me show you all what I mean by that. Follower wonk. So this is the uh, follower wonk. So it basically, you know, tracks uh, your users and uh, to show you if there are any fake users or how many of them are active and how many are not and which one you can unfollow. It's an old tool. It still does the work. You can sort out followers, track them, analyze them, compare users. If you want to do search like influencers and add them too. So yeah, that's that's what the follower uh, wonk is. I mean, a buffer app and Hootsuite, buffer app, all the other, those are uh, scheduling tools. So basically you put in the content and you're scheduling it so it can go to a specific social media channels. Follower wonk just for Twitter. It's not like a tweet deck or anything like that. So that's uh, what it is, okay? And there's so many tools out there. Some of them are paid versions and some of them are free. I mean, you can try the free version on the follower wonk and, uh, and see if that helps. Okay. So let's see. Do we have any more questions? Please uh, feel free to ask. I'm sure you'll have, uh, you'll have some challenges that you're stuck with. Hey, Rocky, what's going on, my man? Thank you for tuning in. If you are working on a project, on a website, on, on something and you're stuck or you need some help, you know, now it's a time to ask, okay? I know uh, mentor me OEV is here. So let me know if you'll have any any questions. Any questions on digital marketing? Uh, let's see. Any tips on uh, content calendar? Okay, well, first of all, guys, what is content calendar? So content calendar, this is something my social media team put together for, let's say, a particular client in a particular niche. If the client don't have content to give it to us, the the basic gives us some ideas and information about their business and uh, brochures and some publication. We can look at it and learn some knowledge about the business. Then we recreate the content on their behalf. So once we recreate, recreate the content, once we recreate the content on their behalf for like images, videos, and, and text and whatnot, we share it with our customer and we have a calendar that shows what are we going to post on a daily basis and what time. So that's what the calendar is. It basically helps you to organize your content that you're going to schedule it on Buffer App and somewhere else, but you can use the sheet to look at it and either replicate it for the next month or make some changes and you can study whether these information are working or not. So that's what the in, in general is a content calendar it can be used for social media it can be used for um uh blogging uh, uh content as well uh, gina what's going on thank you for tuning in so that's what the content calendar is so when it comes to the tips i mean you can if you go bootstrapping it i mean you can use excel or you can use uh there's, there's a third party tools for like content calendar through wordpress that you can plug it in like for example course schedule so course schedule, what it, uh, the course schedule, let me show you. Uh, Josiah, how are you? Thank you for tuning in. So course schedule, it's a WordPress plugin. So what it does, it basically uh, helps you to um, post your blogging material. This is course schedule. There's another one, I forgot the name, something similar. So you can have the content. This is how the calendar looks like on the back end of your WordPress. So you can have your, if you blog uh, once a week, you can schedule it for the whole month, put on the back end of the self-hosted WordPress, and it will automatically post it to your website, which is your WordPress, self-hosted WordPress-based website. And at the same time, it will push the content to your Twitter or Pinterest or Facebook and LinkedIn and whatnot. And the cool thing about it, 
for every social media channels, you can you can write a, a small uh, you know post uh, content that is specific to that channel because the same messages you cannot use it on Twitter. Makes sense because the language on Twitter is different, and same thing with LinkedIn. And the cool thing about this plugin, it also comes with the analytics. So one of my um, client used this uh, asperger101.org a while back, and uh, they were having fun with it. Right, the the, the content team publish all the material. They get scheduled through the co schedule and it gets pushed out. Then the analytics shows them which one is working, how many eyeballs, how many reading, how many whatnot. So, so that's one of the tips I would say. If you have a self hosted based WordPress website, you can use co schedule if you want to invest in it. If not, I mean, a basic uh, Excel sheet should be, should be enough for you to organize. Uh, let's see. Yes, uh, what I was okay. Yes, what is membership plugin for? Is that to add uh, to Learn Dash or does it replace Learn Dash? Excellent question. Actually, Learn Dash is a membership plugin. Makes sense. Learn Dash already has a membership plugin. In fact, if you go to my uh, favorite site for WordPress, I highly recommend everybody to go to WP Beginner if you're just learning how to build a WordPress self hosted base website. You can also follow their Facebook group. So let's go to. Uh, Let's see, member, membership plugin, because I love this website because they do a lot of analysis and reviews and most of the popular plugins. So right here, uh, there's an ultimate guide on creating a WordPress membership site. You can look into that. Uh, 23 best WordPress theme for membership site. And these are the, the actual membership plugin, right? So like Learn Dash, Optimize Press, Wishlist, and the list goes on and on. So check out this uh, article here. Uh, let's see. Talk about member press. That's one. That's one plugin. They got the the pros and cons of this plugin. Then you have Learn Dash. There you go. Because Learn Dash is a membership. It's part of the. It's like a membership. There's so many tools that you know competitor that use the same service. Uh, Teachable, which is actually a website by itself. That I'm surprised that they have a plugin for that too for WordPress. Uh, Restrict Content Pro and s2 member so these are some of the feedback that you can find so mentor me oev go ahead and check this content here to answer your question it's the same thing so learn dash is just uh, one company and there's so many companies that uh, offer membership services right the tons and, and one of the beauty of wordpress i was speaking to one of my clients business partner uh, last week that they were planning to build a some type of internal portal for their company for their staff and of course if you build it from scratch they call it like intranet that's back in the day but typically now it's called portal if you build it from scratch you're looking at like anywhere between like 50 to 60 like six uh, figure uh cost of the project and there are companies that offer the service where you can pay them monthly a couple of hundreds a couple of thousand to utilize them uh, these are the two options, but they were trying to build something, you know, for their own company without the excessive cost. And the beauty for that, uh, uh, WordPress has a similar plugin on the the subject of you know internet or portal, which is amazing. And you can buy that plugin for like a fifty to hundred bucks and have it customizable. So that way you don't have to spend like six figures or fifty Gs on a project like that. That's the beauty of WordPress because any complicated not I would I wouldn't say any complicated project, but let's say most uh, semi -compli complicated project that you need help with WordPress already has a plugin for that so it makes the cost a little bit uh, minimized you know and efficiency on delivering the, delivering the project uh, uh, quicker as well uh, Javid says any tips uh, rules about using Creative Commons pictures for marketing purposes that's an excellent question so let me show you this that's a good question right there so when it comes to when it comes to the Creative Common uh, pictures and whatnot, if you go to, uh, let's say, Google directly. Hey, what's going on, bro? If you go to Google directly, if you pick any images, you have to be very, very careful because they don't want to get sued, right? So let's say I'm going to type the word San Antonio. <clears throat> so these images, I can just grab any images. What I need to do, I need to go to the tools right here. I think tools or settings. Let me see. Is it tools? Yeah. Click on the tools, then right here, what it says, usage rights. 
here all these options labeled for reuse with modification labeled for re reuse labeled for non-commercial reuse with modification so based on these rules you can select if i pick the second one that means i can reuse these and adjust it based on this license right here okay that's number one <clears throat> number two uh, i put a list of uh, sites that has all these uh, royalty free pictures that you can utilize it if you go to my um, Facebook and right here under the notes then this one if you click on this one I basically put uh, most of the popular links it's not updated it's been almost since 2017 just double I'm, I'm gonna update it uh, soon but check out all these links and see if some of the some of these links still work and you can utilize those images because that means the website give you the permission to use it uh, uh, as much as you want okay so that's option number two option number three purchase I do actually for my clients I do actually purchase images I don't use the free one for my customers so we use uh, one two three RF dot com because once I purchase it it's mine and of course other people probably using it too that's fine so one two three RF is my favorite spot uh, the other one, uh, recently one of my uh, friends from California re uh, recommended this to me and I basically paid for it. It's like 80 bucks, 80 bucks for the whole year. Unlimited download. <clears throat> this one, uh, Free Pike. Okay. You can pay monthly or just one time fee uh, 12, uh, for 12 months in advance and I can download unlimited. Okay. So that's another option called the Free pike.com so if you want to like either pay monthly i think it's eight bucks a month or uh, eighty dollars or ninety dollars for the whole year to get the unlimited download okay so those are the one that i would recommend when it comes to like you know images and whatnot you gotta be very careful uh if you want to you don't want to get sued anything like that because i know a couple of years ago somebody shared an image in pinterest pinterest and they got sued because they did not know it was a copyrighted okay um let's see uh, let's see. Okay, uh, what platform are good to create online courses? Uh, Charles, there are ton. I mean, there there's no one. I mean, there there are tons. They're like Optimize Press, which is a, a whole theme by itself. Um, if you go to if you go to like the WP Beginner and look at the membership plugin, I mean, there are tons, man. It's all up to you. Like, how do you want to utilize it? And at the same time, for customers that wants a membership type of website the question is what are they selling is if it's a video type of courses great uh, do they want to provide a pdf awesome uh, do they want to have some sort of some sort of system where when somebody watches it it shows them this course is completed so they can follow through uh, does it come with an email notification so you can send to the student does it come with an option where when somebody sign up they can create their own username and password so these are the questions that you have to ask first before jumping into the plugins because there are some plugins might have extra features that you or your customer might not need right so if you have a client that wants to build a membership type of course or website or service find out what what is the type of the uh, courses they're going to provide uh, is it going to come with the pdf uh, do they want user to create their own username and password uh the, the timeline of you know going through the course so they can make sure that somebody actually reading it is it a monthly membership course or is it a one-time fee course? Make sense? So ask these nece necessary questions. Then look at the plugins that uh, offer it because most of them they do offer it. But look at the plugins that exactly offer what they want without any extra uh, uh, bells and whistles, right? Uh, so mentor me, OEV says makes sense. Okay. Uh, labeled for rise or modification means... Uh, uh, labeled for rise i honestly don't know i mean i understand the modification means you can use it and modify it rise i don't understand what that means you can always go to C creative common and find out what the licensing mean <clears throat> uh course completed yeah course completed like you know sometimes you watch the video and it shows you if you finished the the video so that's pretty cool because i can see who actually watched and who didn't you know what i mean so that's a cool feature to have on a membership type of website now, some of my clients didn't want to invest in WordPress or build, build it from scratch or use a plugin to connect with the payment and whatnot. So they basically went with uh, Teachable, which is a service. It's not a, it's a standalone service similar to Shopify, but for courses, so for, for creating courses like Teachable, Thinkific. There's so many. So he's been doing very good. In fact, some of my clients are actually doing very good with this one. 
Uh, he's paying like 50 bucks a month and he just comes with the landing page feature, got a bunch of videos on the back end, PDF documents and the time to see. It's, it's really amazing and you can make so many courses. So that's one option, even though I personally prefer to build everything from scratch, right? But again, some customers, they're brand new, they're on a tight budget. If this is going to help them, why not? Go for it, okay? Run with it because you still need to focus on generating the income and pushing the traffic to the website so they can so you can get the target audience find the website and convert into paying customers okay uh, yeah reuse mini can use it on many places that's what it means you can you, you can reuse it on not just one place you don't have to just put on the blog but you can reuse it over and over that's what it means you can also modify it so that's what it means okay so so let's see any more uh, questions. Do we have any more questions? Keep those questions coming. These are great questions, uh, folks. Keep those questions coming. It is uh, six thirty p.m. Central Time right now. Let's see. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Hey, Nia, what's going on? Thank you for uh, tuning in. What's up, Jeff? How are you, bro? It's been a while, man. How you doing? Hey, Nia, did you get uh, the travel situation uh, with the block taking care of the project that you're working on? Okay, so there's another question right here. Is it better to use an old Facebook page and rebrand it for a new business or create a new one well that's a good question it depends because if you are let's say in the coffee shop business and you just change the name of the brand right and you have all these followers that already part of your old business right so in that situation i wouldn't create another page for it i would just basically change the brand name and let the audience know that the name of, name of the business change because you said you have all this you, you collected all these audience for like for years so why completely uh, ignore them because if you create a new one now you're going to have to start all over from scratch, okay? So that's number one. Number two, if it's a different business, let's say you went from a coffee shop to, I don't know, Mexican restaurant, two different businesses, you close the coffee shop, and now you're in the Mexican uh, type of business, restaurant, then it's not the same audience. In that situation, yeah, you have to build a, a new page and let the old customer know that you the business is closed, but you're opening, you know, uh, uh, a, a Mexican restaurant because not everybody that goes to the coffee shop probably are into Mexican food, for example. So it's not going to be cool to bring them all to the new page. You just let them know that you open a new business and see who wants to come and check it out. Make sense? Uh, let's see here. So that was a good question. That was for the Facebook page question. Uh, I used one such picture and some company called uh, Pixar sent me an invoice for 170 saying that this picture is copyrighted. Wow. So the question is, where did you use it from? Did you download it from Google? I wouldn't do that, right? If you buy, you're not going to get in. In most cases, if you buy from 123RF or Free Pike, you're not going to get. You're not going to be in trouble. The links that I sent you for the uh, the free uh, stock photos, those are legit sites. Those are been you know confirmed and approved and verified. So if you got it from one of those, then let me know because most of them should not go after you. Uh, don't talk about food, man. I'm getting hungry. You're getting hungry? Come on, man. <laughs> some food. Yeah. Some, some like Mediterranean and Italian and Mexican and Indian food. Mm. Talk about some steak too, you know. Is Rudy open? I think Rudy's still open, right? The, the barbecue place. I downloaded it from Flickr. You downloaded it from Flickr and got sued because Flickr, it's like YouTube. 
People post their images not for selling. Flickr is like, my, yeah, my personal stuff, like, you know, YouTube. You're not going to go to YouTube and download a video and call it yours. So in Flickr, it's not like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure why. Uh, explore and create. Uh, yeah, these are for people. And I don't think Flickr sells. I, I, I'm not, I mean, I don't spend a while, but I don't think Flickr sells. Flickr is like YouTube, but for images. People upload images. It's like a social media so people can vote on it, check it, you know. But if Flickr has an option, I think they do have an option for uh, creative, common creative. Let's see. Uh, I, uh, I said free under. Yeah, if it said free under Creative Commons, then it should be okay. So you can show them a proof, take a picture. Look, it says Creative Commons is free. Then they cannot go after you. You know, now if somebody stole it <laughs> and put it in Flickr, it is not your fault. But as long as you picked it up from, you know, uh, Creative, Creative Commons, they should not go after you. You know, I, I don't think they can. I mean, well, I mean, in this legal system, this country, they can do anything. But just you got to have a back it up. You have to have a proof, take a picture. Yes, it says here, Creative Commons, and you just ignore them. Okay? They don't pay them a dime. Because uh, sometimes you get scammers. You know, sometimes you get scammers that do stuff like that. Oh, look, you, you're you violating this and this and that. And I'm like, how come? I, I picked Creative Commons, and I, the, the Flickr showed up, and I picked it up. Okay? So, yeah, you might want to, uh, I don't know if you have an, uh, if, they, if they're going to get nasty and make an attorney involved, then you can at least have some sort of proof that, saying that, look, here's a picture I downloaded from this place and the creative comment was selected or the picture was shown. That's why I did it. That's about it. You know, uh, don't, don't pay me a dime, man. Uh, that's crazy. And what you can actually do, you can, if you, if you downloaded that picture, you can go back to Google uh, under the image in the in the search bar, you have that image box. What you can do? Let me show you what you can do. This is a technique that uh, when I do investigation to see if an image or content what it's originally coming from. So let me show you a, a quick uh, technique right here. So when you go to Google.com, you click images. You see this option here. When you click this option, what it does, you can put a link. Of an image somewhere to see what's the resource, what's the original resource of that image, or you can just click upload the image. You can upload the image, then Google will tell you what is the original place that this one was posted, whether it was on Flickr really or some other company. If you find out that it was some other company, then whoever put on Flickr probably did not do, uh, did not do it do it right, or you know didn't do it correctly. Make sense? So that's what you have to do to find out. But as long as it says uh, Creative Commons and you have a proof, you have a snapshot or a picture that's saying that when I did this, it's from Creative Commons, you know, that should, that, you should be okay. You know what I mean? Okay, so do you still have any more questions, folks? Charles, thank you so much for sharing this live stream, and I really appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much. Carlton, what's going on, my man? Good to see you, bro. Hey, David. Uh, what are you up to, man? Hey, Steven. <laughs> it's been a while. Rodolfo in the house. Steven, man. How you been, bro? You all just jumping in and just watching this stuff. You got to say hi or something, at least. Okay, so it's uh, 6.38 p.m. Let me know if you all have any more questions. I'm going to wait for a minute. Sister Turaj, assalamu alaikum, how are you? Okay, let me check this. The flicker thing. Do Comment. Upload in March 2019. See the yeah, some rights reserved. Some rights reserved. Attribution to Bono Generic. Okay. You are free to share, adapt, copy and dis copy and redistribute the material in any medium or format. Okay. Under the following terms. You give a 
you you must give appropriate credit, provide a link to the license, an indicator of changes were made. So did you do that part? So if you use the image, I have to say what you got it from or who is the original uh, company that, that made the image. That's what it says here. Under this term, you must give appropriate credit, provided a link to the license, and indicate if changes were made. You may do so in any reasonable manner, but not in any way that suggests the licensor endorses you or your use. Okay, so that's what it means. Uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, Turaji's sister said, Question, what should a person look for when trying to hire a company to do the SEO? Great question. I'm that company. <laughs> Okay, so here's the thing. Um, when you look for a company that runs search engine optimization, first uh, ask them the question like, you know, how long they've been doing the SEO kind of services, and what are the uh, the what's the difference between the on-page SEO and the off-page SEO, and how long it takes for uh, for implementing the search engine optimization to basically help you get the targeted traffic and get the uh, you know ranking right uh, number four ask them uh, what is more important uh, ranking or conversion okay if they say ranking only then then they're not experienced if they say uh, conversion of course because when the target audience comes into your website they have to convert right and of course the ranking is part of it too when it comes to like how long it takes uh, organic search engine takes time maybe six months nine months one year there is no quick fast result if they say very fast result they don't know what they're talking about if they can differentiate between the on page and off page they're, they're not a good SEO company in order for your website to eventually rank and get the traffic you have to do a monthly you know search engine task which is called the off page SEO right ask them how many hours do they spend in our company we spend anywhere between 27 to 55 hours per month per domain okay you can see it's, 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 it's going to get a little bit pricey Right, so those are the questions, and also number six, have them show you some sort of case studies, or show you like what what did what did they do to certain customers before and after, like what happened to the traffic or what happened to the conversion and sales and whatnot. Okay, and uh, so those are for the for the SEO uh, kind of company that you want to hire, and the other thing is that a good uh, ethical, uh, relevant, reliable search engine company they are not cheap just so you know that they are not in hundreds right if they are from overseas yeah they can be the good company from overseas uh the really the best one are not less than uh 500 to a thousand right these are like the good company from overseas from here it look like thousand or more per month okay um let's see uh, Carlton, affiliate marketing, how to start in the field? That's an excellent question, uh, Carlton. Affiliate marketing, again, it's a, it's, a, it's a one big name, just like in the medical field, right? Then you have different categories. You have affiliate marketing through tech companies or web hosting companies. You have uh, other companies that offer you uh, affiliate marketing program where you can actually promote their products. So really start with, first, what kind of skills do you have? And if you can find companies that sells those sort of skills, let's say if you're a travel blogger, right, then you can find so many airlines and uh, price line kind of services that offer affiliate program. Whoever logs into your, uh, clicks your link and buy these tickets, you get paid commission, for example. If you're a photographer, of course, you're going to do an affiliate marketing on the, the best cam quarters and digital cameras and, and reviews on the products and get paid through Sony or, or, or Canon's affiliate program if they have it. If you're, in the, if you're into the health business, if you're like a nutritionist, you want to recommend an uh, amazing product that you use it by yourself. And if they have an affiliate program, you can use their affiliate program. So there's so many. There's so many, right? You can also go to companies like Commission Junction, companies like uh, ShareSale, and see what kind of companies also offer affiliate, uh, affiliate marketing kind of services. Because in affiliate marketing, I mean, Amazon is number one affiliate marketer. I mean, you can sign up with the program, but right now, the commission kind of went down uh, the percentage. You know, you can share any of their uh, product from Amazon and get paid commission for every sale, right? So the affiliate marketing is huge. You can use blogging to talk about a specific subject and reviews and feedback and whatnot, like unboxing, that kind of stuff, and get paid commission based on 
talking about that specific product or service it's through blogging, right? You can also use ads to push traffic back to a specific product when you're when the audience purchases product, then you get paid commissions. Okay, so there's so, so there's so many types of the you know options that you can pick and choose, but you need to start with one and focus on that hundred percent so you can see the difference in terms of like generating some additional income on the side. Toraji says no sound, uh, it can, but everyone everyone can hear me. Toraji must be your phone, <laughs> okay? Uh, because nobody else is saying that the sound is not working. Uh, okay, so so Javadi said he didn't make any changes. Uh, but when you when you share the picture, did you say where it came from? <laughs> okay, did you hear my answer? <laughs> it was a long one. <laughs> About the SEO, were you able to hear it? My answer for the how to, how to find a good uh, search engine company. Yeah, everyone says I can hear you. So Turaji, if you did not hear my answer about the search engine, let me know. I will ask. I will answer you again. Uh, so Java said you did not uh, give credit. Maybe that's why. It says here you must give appropriate credit provided a link to the license, like where the image came from. All right, so Turaji, you said you heard the answer? Okay. All right, partially. So yeah, basically when you look for somebody, you have to ask how long they've been doing it and have them explain to you the difference between the on-page SEO and the off-page SEO. Ask them, and the reason because there's a difference. On-page is a one-time thing. Off-page is a consistent monthly task and what kind of task they're going to implement, right? How long it takes? No uh, honest if you uh, no honest SEO person can tell you it, it it works in three months. Nobody can say that. If they're honest, they're gonna say maybe three, six, nine, or one year. Those are the honest SEO people. They're gonna tell you the truth. There are some people out there that says, "Oh yeah, we can you know put you in the first page within ninety days." It's impossible. Okay, it's up to Google to decide that. Now, it's not a Google ads. Google ads. So how long uh, the difference? Um, the timing and also uh, which is important conversion or ranking because you can rank for a keyword that your customer don't look for and and then you're not going to get any conversion right so conversion is high is high priority than just the ranking uh, ranking does help because especially when you come on the first page of Google that's like you're gaining like almost 30 percent of the click right there right so how to explain that to you and how can you show me some examples of what did they do for customers, you know, like before traffic and after they came in, what happened to the traffic, stuff like that. How can show you some work, right? And these are, these are the five questions I would at least ask uh, to find out because there are some that are shady. There are some companies that only do on-page SEO, but they charge like monthly without doing monthly tasks. There are some companies will give you all these uh, PDF files of what we're going to do and all this fancy word that makes no sense or maybe just one task written like a 10, a ten times with a different statements. It's like a one task but they wrote it like 20 times which means the same one thing like because customers don't understand these sort of thing, right? So that's how you find it. And the price, of course, like I said, searching is not is not cheap. I mean, good, good company, like companies that I know like my competitors, they charge like two, three, four thousand a month. Right, so if you find a company from uh, overseas, uh, the good company from overseas will charge you like you know five to six, uh, uh, like the lowest price up to like a thousand and up, right? So that's very very important because people people go to Fiverr and pay somebody five bucks and they tell me like I did SEO for five bucks that doesn't work like that, right? They can do keyword analysis for five bucks from Fiverr for example, but not the whole uh, process because it takes time. Like in my company, I have like six or seven people that work on one client when, when they do SEO. That's a lot of work. When you look at like 27 to like 55 hours of work, and if you, even if you pay them like minimum wage, $10 or $15 an hour, that's still a lot of money per month, right? So yeah. Are there any questions? It is 6.48 p.m. So let me know. And Javed, the, the picture is actually from Marco Verge Professional. So you can you can contact them because they are the one who posted it and you can tell them, hey, what, what's up with this? 
But when you put the picture, you're supposed to say that this picture was taken from Marco Verge Professional. So if you did not do that, maybe I'm assuming, I'm not saying that's what they got in trouble, but that could be a possibility. In Turaji, you can, another option is you can just learn. I mean, you can come to my workshop and learn how to do SEO by yourself. There are a few things you can do by yourself if you learn it, but the, but, but the, the technical and the, the multitask, those are the one can, um, take you take it will take it quite some time to to learn and implement because those are the heavy work all right but at least do the basic which is the on page optimization the keyword research if you just do the basic and stay consistent with pushing amazing content then it can definitely help you plus with the type of business with your type of business you need to have like a local uh, seo listing which is the google my business page yelp super pages hot frog so you need to dominate and claim the local listing for that, you need to go to moz.com slash local, moz, M-O-Z, dot com slash local, enter the, enter the name of your business and the zip code, then it will tell you your local listing score, like which of the ten, uh, which of the top 10 uh, local listing sites that you need to be. So that way, your customer can find you and leave reviews and so forth. So at least you need to take care of that. Because the thing is, uh, people need to understand how we, when we go to Google, what do we do in Google? Like when we, when we look for information or when we look for companies and businesses and stores, so what do we type? What do we search? So we have to understand the intent and the search behavior of the target audience online. Yeah, moz.com slash local. Let me show you. So the first thing you need to do is go to moz.com slash local. Once you come right here, just click the uh, yellow button right here. Then put the name of your uh, business. Still thinking. You got a few minutes. Put the name of the business right here. Street number. You know, then the zip code. Then you, then you do check, uh, check now. And it will tell you out of these top 10 pages, where are you listed? If you're not, then you have to claim them. And you have to make sure that all the information are 100% accurate, like your business name, the description of the business, the location, types of payments, uh, parking area, right? Hours of operations, uh, contact to other social channels, email, other social channels, the proper category of the business, type of the business category, all this stuff. You got to at least be in these top 10 pages. Okay, it's called local listing. So when the customer comes in, they can find you on Facebook, they can find you on Google, my business page, leave your reviews. The more reviews you have, the better and the more searchability. searchability. But the thing, but the thing is, with your type of business, uh, you are very niche based. So you should show up on the first page of Google because not too many of you, uh, not too many of the from people from our community does business like yourself, right? So you should be number one on Google. If you want to go online, then you need to implement like online uh, shopping cart. Right now, Facebook uh, introduced like shopping through a Facebook page and also Instagram. So you can utilize that to sell, like deliver, you know, nationwide, right? Yeah, do online thing because uh, I've, I've been talking about this like, you know, for almost a decade that like how everything's going to be online, all the behavior is going to be online. And with this crisis, that behavior actually like m multiple times increased like more than 200% up there, right? So, I hope this is going to be a lesson for some businesses to understand that everything is online and you have to have a backup. Even the fitness industry are right now heavily getting into it, right? So same thing with your business. I know it's uh, you are like a brick and mortar, but when you do things online, I mean, you get the order from several places, you have to package it, you have to mail it. It's going to be a lot of work, but it's worth it. Then eventually when you get too much demand, then you can basically uh, have it uh, shipped by different companies and you can just hire somebody to do that. Or you can also test it with FBA, Amazon, which is you can have this product sent to the Amazon warehouse and have your audience buy it from Amazon directly. That's the only problem because it's going to be from Amazon, right? Uh, and uh, that means your, your other competitors are already there too. So that's something you can, you can probably test and not necessarily completely shift to Amazon. It is best to have your own online store so all your audience that uh, like your product and your business can always come to you. And you can also build a brand uh, from your name as well. You know what I mean? All right. Uh, so that's the that's uh, Moz local. 
Uh, any more questions? It is uh, 6 54 p.m. Central Time. So let me know if, if y'all have any more questions on digital marketing, if y'all need any resources. Uh, last week, I found this awesome tool called the Big Spy. Yeah, Big Spy. Basically, that shows you the top uh, uh, ads or popular Facebook ads within specific niche. So it's not free. Uh, the first time you use it, like free after like one or three inquiry, it's pretty cool. So that way we can see what other ads are working out there, what kind of uh, engagement they're getting so we can learn from it and replicate it. Okay, that's for the specifically uh, for Facebook, Instagram, I think for four or five channels. So it's good to check it out. All right, do we have any more questions, folks? Do we have any more questions? Sorry, I'm kind of getting a little bit rude by checking the phone. How rude of me checking the phone while I'm doing live session. All right. Any more questions? Do you have any question about digital marketing? Feel free to ask. It is 6.55. I'm going to wait for one more minute. Uh, let's see. Tuana, what's going on? It's been ages. How you been? How you doing? What are you doing? Uh, mentor me, OEV. You're most welcome. Once again. <laughs> So I forgot mentor. What do you do? I, I I don't know. I know a couple of times you asked me a question. I was I think helping with something, but I don't know. What do, what do you do for your business? I forgot. I forgot. Not right now. I'm going to mass. Excellent. Take that action. ASAP. All right, uh, let's see. Where can I get my Usified t-shirts or sticker? Yeah, it's somewhere in, uh, what is that uh, website? Teespring? T Teespring? Teespring, Teespring. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, there you go. Find the link. The link, finally. I put it there. I just kind of put it there. I never I never promoted, man. Sounds weird. Here we go. So I'm going to share the link right here. Teespring. I should put a lot of products out there. <laughs> Maybe make another one, uh, put a mask. <laughs> right? So there you go. Get a t-shirt, mug, lots of stuff with my use of eye. Let me show you the link right here. One second. So I'm asking about the t-shirt. So there you go. Teespring.com slash stores slash get dash useified. Okay. So teespring.com slash stores slash get dash usified so you can see phone case cover t-shirts i want to send my clients a use of my t-shirt oh, that would be awesome <laughs> just don't send them that uh the the reaction video man <laughs> so there you go usified I'm, I'm gonna have my team do some new designs maybe maybe i should make another one called deusified um i actually found a lot of cool images do y'all use a bitmoji the Bitmoji app where you can make your face and whatnot, like the emoji. Now they're actually selling products through Bitmoji. And I was actually thinking if it was okay for me to basically take those images and make a t-shirt out of it. But I don't think I'm able to because they own the, 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 the graphic, right? They own the design. So I thought that I would never be able to do that. I was trying to get in touch with them to see if I can do it. But now I noticed that Bitmoji itself... Uh, comes with uh, what do you call it uh, a store so you can basically buy your own t-shirt with your own you know funny faces you know what I'm talking about bitmoji bitmoji no. bitmoji that is bitmoji so I, I notice here it says uh, fashion I'm like uh, no, not the fashion I notice in their app that there is uh, yeah merch store see so I was like wow they have their own store 
Look at that. Let me show you guys. So on the Bitmoji app, oh, sorry. Uh, let me. So on the Bitmoji, y'all can see it. See? See that? Look at that. Look at that, look at that, look at that guy. See, with all kinds of colors and uh, all type of, uh, yeah. Pedal. So Bitmoji has all these cool graphics, man. They're amazing. I'm like, man, that sounds so weird. I'm gonna buy my own Bitmoji. That's just weird. It's like, it's so narcissistic. Anyway. So you got the apron, everything, but they're already selling it. I'm like, do they have an affiliate program <laughs> so I can share the link and get some sort of commission? I better, I better contact them. Yo, y'all have like an affiliate program so I can send people to a link where they can buy all these crazy cool graphics that you guys do and just give me like percentage. You know what I mean? So, yeah. All right, folks. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in today. I highly appreciate that as always. So keep sending me those questions. I'll be back tomorrow at 6 p.m. And uh, if you all still need any help, just let me know. And if you're watching this as a replay, just put in the comment section, replay. For now, I will see you all. Really not weird if you have a great idea. Yeah, absolutely, Carlton. But the Bitmoji has a lot of cool uh, graphics. I love the cartoonish graphic. I'm like, man, I just, they're like, they have like hundreds of designs. I mean, hundreds of designs. So no. But yeah, anyway, I'll see you later tomorrow. Thank you, thank you so much. Bye-bye for now.